Hi, I'm Dr. Second Chance, and I want you to think for yourself. The question, cults, brainwashing in the recovery community? Maybe yes, maybe no, but I want you to figure it out and think about the issue for yourself. I'm a licensed physician, a trained recovery coach, and a person with 13 years of long-term recovery from alcohol and oxycodone use. This is the third of a video series addressing cults, brainwashing, and the recovery community. The first two focused on the actions and behaviors of a group that is a cult. Today, we will focus on the characteristics of a pathologic, narcissistic leader of a cult. So what are some characteristics of a pathologic, narcissistic leader of a cult? He often has grandiose ideas of who he is and what he can achieve. He's often preoccupied with fantasies of unlimited success, power, or brilliance. Doesn't sound like anyone that leads any recovery groups I've gone to. Demands blind, unquestioned obedience. Requires excessive admiration from followers and outsiders. Has a sense of entitlement. Expecting to be treated as special at all times. I dated some girls in college like that. Is exploitive of others by asking for their money or that of their relatives. Putting others at financial risk. He's arrogant and haughty in his behavior or attitude. He has an exaggerated sense of power and entitlement that allows him to bend rules and break laws. Take sexual advantage of members of a sect or cult. Sex is a requirement with adults and sub-adults as part of a ritual or rite. Stick me, with me on this as we talk about the characteristics of a, of a cult leader. If you see a leader acting this way, there's a good chance you are involved in a cult. He's sen hypersensitive to how he is seen or perceived by others. Publicly devalues others as being inferior, incapable, or not worthy. Makes members confess their sins or faults publicly subjecting them to ridicule or humiliation while revealing exploitable weaknesses of the penitent, that means the person confessing, has ignored the needs of others, including biological, physical, emotional, and financial needs. Boy, there are some cults that really starve their um, new uh, members uh, to break them down emotionally. Is frequently boastful of accomplishments needs to be the center of attention and do things to distract others. A pathologic leader of a, of a cult often makes himself extra noticed by having a theatrical entrance, arriving late, or having other pomp and circumstances surrounding his arrival. He insists on always having the best of anything, Houses, cars, boats, and, uh, and clothing, even though his followers may have little or none of those kinds of things. A pathologic narcissistic leader of a cult will also have haughtiness, grandiosity, and needs to be controlling. And this is a major part of his personality. He doesn't seem to listen very well to the needs of others. Communication is one way, by the way of commands, orders, dictates, etc. He believes and thinks of people are objects to be used, manipulated or exploited for personal gain and sexual pleasure. When criticized, he tends to lash out not just with anger, but with rage. Anyone who criticizes or questions him is called an enemy. He refers to non-members or non-believers as the enemy. Acts imperilous at times, not wishing to know what others think or desire. Believes himself to be omnipotent. Yeah, 
Some of these guys really think they're God. Cult leaders often believe they have magical powers or solutions to problems. They tend to be superficially charming because they have to be to attract some people, but when you get to know them, then you see through them. Habitu habitually puts down others as inferior. Only the uh, pathologic narcissistic leader is superior. He has a certain coldness and aloofness about him that makes others worry about who, who is he really. He's deeply offended when there are perceived signs of boredom in the group or that he's being ignored or if he's being slighted. Treats others with contempt and arrogance. Is constantly assessing people to determine those who are a threat to him or those who revere him and follow him no matter what. Yeah, I haven't seen too many leaders of too many recovery groups that act this way. The word I dominates his conversations. He is oblivious to how often he references himself. I have posted these down below in the description, but stick with me to the end if you can. These uh, pathologic narcissistic leaders of cults, they hate to be embarrassed or fail publicly. Well, I guess we all do to some extent, but when he does, he acts out with rage. He doesn't seem to feel guilty for anything he's done wrong, nor does he apologize for his actions. And this is so different than what most recovery groups teach in terms of taking a moral inventory, um, asking for forgiveness, making amends, that sort of thing. Believes he possesses the answers and solutions to the world problems. Well, some re recovery groups feel strongly that they have an answer to some substance abuse uh, problems, but they don't feel they have the answers to all the world's problems. Believes himself to be a deity or a chosen representative of a deity. Rigid, unbending, insensitive, describes how this person thinks. He tries to control others in what they do, read, view, and think. Has isolated uh, members from the sect from contact with their family in the outside world. Monitors and or restricts contact with family or outsiders. Works the least, but demands the most. Man, this type of leader will put you to work full time to make him money. Pathologic narcissistic leaders of cults often use enforcers or syncophats to ensure compliance from members or other believers. Sees himself as unstoppable and perhaps has even said so. Conceals background or family because he sure wouldn't want the members to see how ordinary they are. Doesn't think there's anything wrong with himself. In fact, sees himself as perfection or somehow uniquely blessed. Has taken away followers' freedoms to leave, to travel, to pursue life and liberty. Listen, if you're part of a recovery group where you're free to go anywhere you want, take any job you ever want, travel around, you're not in a cult. He has isolated the group physically, um, perhaps removing, uh, moving to a remote area as not to be observed. Well, if uh, these recovery groups are location and times of meetings are plastered all over the internet and easy to find, then you're not dealing with a cult. Anyways, I go through these. I've, I've listed some information in the um, description. My purpose here is not to take a side, um, although I have been to many um, Zen, um, Zen Buddhist, Native American, AA, NA type meetings, and um, my experience has not been, yeah, you know, you can have some weird people, but uh, my experience to date has not been that they've risen to the level of cults that have been um, uh, described by other experts. Um, so again, I encourage you to think for yourself. I'll see you next time.